Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. Comedian Stephen Wright, one of my favorites, has a great line in one of his routines. You can't have everything, he says. Where would you put it? I think I have the answer, at least at my house. It's called a junk drawer. I don't know that it is required of home ownership, but I'll bet that every home in America has a junk drawer. Maybe at your house you call it something else, but I'm certain you've got one. It's the one place you put stuff you can't throw away and can't explain keeping. Decades after we first started tossing things in it, the junk drawer has become a nuts and bolts journal of sorts, a collection of debris that in an odd way tells the story of a life and a marriage. A year after my wife's passing, I finally decided to pull out the junk drawer and take inventory. Certainly it's an unconventional way to grieve and perhaps heal a bit, but something had to be done with a drawer that had become packed so tightly I couldn't slide it open anymore without mushing down all the stuff inside. Once I pried it loose from the kitchen cabinet's clutches, it turned out to be more workshop than drawer. Here's a partial list of the contents. Two baby food jars, one filled with short nails, the other with short screws. Behind the jars I found a screwdriver with a multicolored handle. My wife considered it hers, not ours. She even gave it a name. She called it Miss Pinky. A small roll of yellow duct tape. How does any household function without duct tape? But I'd never seen a yellow roll before. Maybe it started out gray and turned yellow from age. Hard to tell. A sandwich bag full of rubber bands. I'm not about to count them, but I'm guessing at least 500 or so are jammed in there. Why would anyone need hundreds of rubber bands? I'm sure she had her reasons. A small box of batteries. A couple double A's, a couple triple A's, a couple of flat discs. All of them are well past their expiration date. A small S-shaped thing. Oh yeah, it's that little wrench I may need someday if the garbage disposal ever clutches up. At least now I know where it's been all these years. I think I'll tape the wrench under the sink. With yellow duct tape, of course. What else was in there? Magic markers that relinquished their magic and dried up years ago. A stud finder. A red plastic straw. Two glue sticks that appear to have been manufactured in an earlier century. They were stuck together right next to a tube of super glue. I had no idea we were so big on adhesives. Several bags of tiny Christmas tree light bulbs and fuses. Well, it's good to know I'll never run out. <laughs> a Santa Claus Pez dispenser. No candy, just a dispenser. In the junk drawer? Who does that? Finally, and I know you're not ready for this, a ticking wall clock. I'm not making this up. It's about nine inches in diameter and bears the logo of something called Spring Hills Dairy, where, quote, chocolate milk is pasteurized and homogenized. When I say the clock is functioning, I speak only of the sweeping second hand. The hour and minute hands dangle helplessly at the 630 position, keeping each other company for who knows how many years now. Oh, well, as Jimmy Buffett might say, it's 630 somewhere. As you might expect, most of this stuff is headed to a much larger junk drawer now. It's called a landfill. Then I can start to refill the drawer with a whole new batch of things that I don't know what to do with. But Miss Pinky, she stays. And the Santa Claus Pez dispenser, I'm keeping that too. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.